Greetings, greetings, greetings. Say happy new year. <laughs> or, you know, we've gone into February already, you know, but I want to welcome you all once again again for the very very first time on this platform i want to welcome you to this platform don't judge me i'm a single parent i want to welcome you all for being part of this you know thank you once again for all of you who started this journey with me um last year thank you so so much um this year we have awesome time by the special grace of god awaiting us so i welcome you my name is pastor floris lyman and um as you for those of you who don't know me i am not only <laughs> a woman of faith i am a mother which is why um you know i was moved to create this platform because um you know i found myself in in you know similar situations um related to others so i am a mom of two teenagers um i am an assistant head of learning um in one of our secondary schools here in east london um i am a host i am a speaker i love to motivate people i love to motivate young people maybe because i'm working with young people i love to motivate young people i love to motivate adults i love to push i love charitable courses i love to push anything that is good you know that's just my nature i will say i am multifaceted and also i am an author so two years ago, I wrote this book, Don't Judge Me. I'm a single parent because I, I, I found myself in that situation about 11, well, it's going to be 12 years, 12 years ago, you know. It's not being joke, you know, but I thank God for his grace and I thank God for his mercies. And one of the reasons why I wrote this book was to encourage as many who find, happen to find themselves in this same situation that all is not lost you know, that you can pick yourself back up, you know, whatever you need to do. And as time goes on, as you look out for your children, as you're making those sacrifices for your children as, as parents, you know, whether you're a single parent dad or a single parent mother, you can pull through. Do not give up. Do not give up. There is nothing in our books that says give up. Oh, wow. You know, so that's the reason why I opened up this page. And um, for those of you um, who are new, I'm also on Instagram, official Floris Lyman. You can find me on Instagram. This show will be up uploaded on the Instagram once we are done. And also, please do remember to like my YouTube channel. Unfortunately, I could not um, upload it onto YouTube today because of some of the procedures, but hopefully it should be up and running. But go and click like subscribe and share so that you don't miss out on the fantastic news that we will we'll be talk, bringing out here for you guys. So I really, really welcome you. It's February already, you know. I needed to push, I needed to kickstart, which is why I am here. So thank you all so, so very much for partaking in this. I really, really do appreciate you all. So you know, it's been challenging. You know, last year, a lot of us have gone through challenges. Again, this year, you know, challenges, you know, but we have to move on. We have to get on. And one of the things that has happened um, for, for a while now is um, us staying at home, our children staying at home and learning at the same time, online learning, that has become like a new normal, you know, and it's not been easy. You know, I work with young people, so I know it's not been easy. I know it's been challenging for both parents. It's been challenging for teachers. What about the young people that we are talking about? What about our children? It's also been challenging for our children. So, you know, I just thought that, you know, to start with, it would be nice, first of all, to acknowledge to acknowledge every parent, you know. Um, I don't care if you've been struggling. It does not matter as long as we're pushing. But I really want to acknowledge every parent that has been on here 
you know, trying and making that effort to make sure your child is still managing to get some form of learning online. So one, one of the things I say to my young people um, is that, um, you know, it's not like Africa where you can repeat your class. <laughs> In this part of the world, you have to, you have to move forward because they, they put our children, you know, according to their ages, right? So they are not going to repeat their class. So something has to happen to keep them going so that when they move on to their, to their new year groups, you know, they will not have to struggle. Even if they have to go over some things all over again, they will not have missed out completely. So it's very, very important as parents, families, guardians, that we support our children. Thank you so very much, my multimedia. Thank you so much that we support our children um, with the online learning and how we can help them to cope. Because trust me, sitting in front of the computer for hours, eight hours, seven hours, it's not a funny game. So I can relate to that. Thank you so much, Mrs. Kamara. So... I'm not the only one here, like I have said um, in my invitation video last week. This year, I just want to bring different individuals, right, that um, are working in, in, in separate fields, separate aspects in life, like I've done last year. And also, of course, you know, this channel is dedicated to parents. Anything about parenting, celebrating parents, celebrating businesses that that, you know, um, people are doing and promoting their businesses and also celebrating the achievement of our young people and celebrating testimonies. The reason why it's good to listen to other people's testimonies is so that you can be encouraged, you can be built up, you know, and decide to say, wow, my issue is not the only one. There are others, you know, you can be encouraged, you can be uplifted to do something, right? Not just sit down, but you can be you can be inspired to do something. So you are all welcome on this platform. So many great things to come. So tonight I have, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Selu. Thank you everyone for joining us. Please do share. Remember to share, to like, and to subscribe and to follow, right? That's the only way we can spread the news and encourage others, right? So tonight, I have with me, it's not other person, he is my brother-in-law, <laughs> but he's someone that I have high esteem for. We went to university together, despite him being my brother-in-law a few years after that. But we went to university together, actually one of the best universities in West Africa, Faraba College, University of Sierra Leone. We went to university together. So I remember I was studying humanities and languages and he was in the engineering department. He was studying um, engineering. So my brother-in-law, Mr. Daniel Kamara, who is a man of God, also at the Sanctuary of Praise International Ministries located in Cardiff. Yeah, he is a graduate in engineering. He's also married to my beautiful sister <laughs> with, uh, with children. He's married with three beautiful um, children. Um, he is a specialist in math and sciences. He's had many years of experience um, in working in various schools right across London, right? So he's presently in Wales. He's also received several awards for middle leadership. Right. For those of you working in, in schools, you should you should know when I talk about leadership management and um, you know senior practitioner, all those titles. Right. Not only that, he has had a good rating from Ofsted. So you all know Ofsted pays us um, <laughs> visits every now and then. So they will visit the classes of teachers and they will give feedback on general teaching and also on the school in general, and they will give feedback on management. So it's a whole lot that Ofsted does, right? So he earned a very good rating. If Ofsted rates you good, I know your salary is going to be good at the end of it. Now, obviously, he's also been recognized as outstanding by the quality um, assurance audit. Wow, I know that he's a disciplined person. He's an encourager. He's an uplifter. Wow. 
he's diligent. He's another person that loves to see well. You know, we all work in the same field. You know, he loves to see young people achieving, loves to see young people um, aspire to greater height. So, wow, that's why I, I said, you know what? Um, for us to start um, this year, it would be nice to bring somebody from the education industry. I have quite a lot of them, you know, and um, it would be nice. Plus, he's a, he's a teacher for one of the core subjects. If you are living here in Europe, we have subjects that we call core subjects, which are English, math, and science. It's like a passport. You want to go to university, you must have those core subjects. Trust me. Otherwise, you have to go and redo them again for your GCSE, which is why it's very, very important that we encourage our children um, to, to ensure they have their core subjects at hand because you just don't know when you are going to use them, right? So I'm not going to waste time because we have quite a few things that we want to talk about. I want to introduce to you Pastor Daniel Kamara. Um, his students will call him Sir or Mr. Kamara. Yeah, <laughs> well, I welcome you to the platform, man of God. I will address you, you know, different titles today. Well, I welcome you to the platform. Please say hi to our viewers. Hi, everyone. Um, um, it's good to be here. Thank you very much, Pastor Flores, for inviting me. And um, I believe, you know, we're going to have a very fruitful time together. And um, yeah, things will work out well. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Kamara, I know that, you know, like I've said, we are all multifaceted. So today we are talking about um, your field, your profession, which is um, you are an experienced math teacher and you also specialize in sciences, right? So um, we've been doing the online learning for quite a while now. And like I said, what of my roles in the morning, half time is over now. We're going back to school tomorrow. One of my roles in the morning is to ensure that our students are ready for learning. You know, sometimes you make some of those phone calls, you have excuses. Oh, miss, my laptop is not working. Uh, um, uh, miss, I woke up late. Miss, my eyes are hurting me. And you know, you have parents that are sharing genuine concerns. You know, all of a sudden we found ourselves at home for months and, you know, our children have to spend six, seven hours on the laptop in order to access their learning. So one of the questions that um, I wanted to ask is um, just about us sharing ideas on, you know, how well we can encourage, number one, our students um, with learning online because they need to cope. It, it is, it is what it is. So what can we say to parents? Obviously, we don't have um, children online with us, but what can we say to parents to, to, to support them and how best they can encourage their children with their online learning? It, it, you know, you've said it all. It's We are living in a challenging time and... Um, one of the first thing I will say in dealing with the current situation um, to all our lovely parents out there is um, is planning, um, planning for every day because for for you to have an, um, a fruitful day, it starts with planning. By that I mean knowing what is the schedule of your children or a child for each day and um because when if you know their timetable then you you already know even before the day of the class for example now you mentioned we are going back to school and um shortly but online you know that they have their first lesson perhaps i don't know period one nine o'clock so you know the start time that also informs you that their sleep time must be different I know that's one of the major challenge with all this, you know, this online. So, um, so we have to always have that in mind and try and encourage them to go to bed early. It can be challenging 
you know, if the truth be told. Uh, but because of you've already planned ahead and know exactly their schedule for the day, um, even though the young people or the student might be reluctant to go to bed, you have to also help them to understand why. It's interesting why they even know why they need to go to bed, but yet still as parents, you need to let them know you have to go to bed early so that you can wake up, you know, in time to prepare for your first lesson. So if you know the clear timetable of your child, it helps you to cut down a whole lot of stress and challenges, you know. And um, so the first thing I'll say to parents is know the timetable of your 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 child or your children and um that's that's number one so that's the first thing i will say and um the second thing i will say is um monitor monitor what they are doing monitor what they are doing well if you have teenagers <laughs> young people can tell you or if you ask them oh um are you online at the moment they'll say yes mommy oh yes daddy but you have to check it. <laughs> you have to check because for whatever reason, our kids are our kids, but no matter whether you're a Christian or not, kids are kids. You, they can say, yes, I'm engaged or yes, I've done the homework, but until you check it, if I then maybe sometimes you'll be surprised. I thought you told me <laughs> that you're done ABC. So number one, planning knowing their timetable number two monitor what they do um uh, if you monitor what they do that reduces a whole lot of things because you can clearly see gaps in what they are telling you and then you can encourage them to close those gaps you know and um so those two things are very very important and um of course you have to balance that again with your work schedule you know i am aware that some parents have different work patterns you know, and um, that also can be challenged because perhaps sometimes your work schedule does not allow you to be at home. You know, so um, yeah, so you you have to find what work for you. But in it all, whatever is your setting at home, whether you know you work in the night or work in the day or at different times, you have to have those two things very clear. Your daily timetable of the student, you need to know what they are doing at every point in time. And then even if you are not at home, you can always follow up to check what they are doing. I'll stop so far. So much. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> the reason why I was laughing, I think every parent on here um, can relate to what we're talking about, right? So. I am encouraging you as a parent for your peace of mind. You know, we have to be nosy because you know what? Our children can be smarter than us. That's the reality. But we are parents. We need to take charge. So I, I agree totally with what a teacher has said. First things first is planning, especially if you're a working parent. You know, you, you have homes where in the morning, Mom and dad are working in the living room. The children are working in their rooms, obviously because you're using the internet and you don't want interruption with, with the Wi-Fi. You know, there are, you know, there are so many challenges, which, which means planning is required. You know, so if planning is not done, there are going to be challenges. And also, you know, as a parent, we need to know our children's timetables. <laughs> I have, you know, there are times when I've made some phone calls to, to, to some of my young people. And, you know, sometimes because of language barrier as well, because of language barrier, some parents are faced with language barrier. So they are not able to communicate. You know, I will advise if you are a parent that struggles with language barrier, please um, try and get a relative that can speak English language because, you know, we can't stigmatize people to say, okay, because you're not speaking, so you won't receive the information. No, try to get a family member that can translate for you exactly the child's timetable in your language, the, the timings, especially of the school day. It's very, very important. And you mentioned something also that um, checking what they are doing on the computer. <laughs> 
checking what they are doing on the computer because for all you know your child you you know sometimes you speak to some parents and they are like you know i'm sitting here with my child is logged on but i have called you to let you know that your child is not logged on it shows that your child is logged on but actually they are not involved in any activity you know so sometimes the students will log on your child will log on as if they are they are participating in their learning you know so please as parents don't be upset when the teacher now calls you to say i've called but your child is not participating because they have to participate so that the teacher is aware that they are actually in the lesson. And also, as parents, please check, check and find out if your child has not opened other windows. If your child has not opened other windows, always check. Because one thing we've, we've noticed, and, and this is common, especially for boys, boys get bored so quickly. They get bored so quickly, and um, as a result of that, they want to be playing their games, yeah? So make sure you check in <laughs> that they don't have the game windows open, and once they see you coming down the stairs or, or going up the stairs, they now, you know, they can minimize the window easily. And you can come, hi, Jack, are you okay? Are you online? Everything fine? They go, oh, yes, mom. Oh, yes, dad. Trust me. Please check as a parent wow <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much um i think another thing i wanted to i wanted us to talk about we've we've talked about planning we've talked about checking um a, another thing that it would be nice for our families our parents to be aware of is that you know i think i mentioned this earlier it's not like africa where we come from um <laughs> check 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 we have to check you know, thank you. It's not like Africa, where we come from. Um, if things don't go on well for a child when they are in a particular class, they repeat they repeat the class for another year. It does not happen here in Europe. So um, I would just like us to shed some light because I think um, it's very important for us as parents to be aware that our children are still going to progress. So for example, if your child is in year seven, I want you to know that they are still going to progress to year eight. I know for people in America, um, maybe you have eighth grade, seventh grade, the, the classification is different, but you know what I'm talking about, that our children you know, are going to progress. So for example, my daughter is doing her GCSEs. You know, um, I feel sorry for her because um, you know, it, it took a while for her to realize that actually she's not staying in year 11. She's going to progress to sixth form or to college. So how can we shed light on this about the seriousness of the matter? Because um, like I said to some of my young people, you your teacher is still going to assess you based on what you have done so far, which is what the government is planning at the moment. Our children are going to be assessed and be given a grade, you know, so how can we shed more light on this just to encourage our parents to encourage their children you know to just give it a little bit more focus because they are going to progress and um you don't want some 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 you know what what, what i don't want is when we go back in september you know parents being upset that oh my child said they are not happy they've been put in a lower set they've been put in this they've been put in that you know i say to people sometimes a magic is not going to take place. Miracles are not going to take place. You know, our children need to be putting some effort, you know, every now and then. So how can we shed more light on that? Um, now, it is interesting, you know, to, to know that, you know, how things can change quickly. Because um, the previous system of assessment for somebody to go from one level to another was to you know prepare for an exam or you do a coursework and then of course you'll be graded. But now with what is happening, that has changed. Now we now parents need to understand that the system of assessment has changed. Now, with regards to the importance of completing work set on a daily basis. Um, parents need to know that if their child does not complete the work set over a period of time, no matter how gifted 
talented that they are when the the teachers behind the scene on the administrative arm of the school are putting together evidences for grading system, that child will be graded according to the result they've obtained from the online learning. Now that is very important. Um, every parent needs to know that, you know, that even current GCSEs, you mentioned about your daughter. Um, now, of course, in Wales here, you know, of course, the system of education is slightly different, but there is an overarching thing that is general across the UK. You know, um, we've, we've, we've started receiving, obviously, clear a lot on what we need to do in terms of assessment. So even as a department in mathematics, we are putting measures in place and encouraging. Now, even as teachers, we are calling parents to understand the changes that have happened. So parents must understand that assessment of change, not only GCSEs, even to the down of the key stages, key stage three. So if your child, for example, is in set one, okay, let's say in maths, in English and science, prior to the pandemic. Now, going forward, of course, they're not, they're not gonna repeat that year eight, for example. They might go to year nine, but what you might end up find out which you must be aware is if that child, even though that child has been in set one, if that child failed to do the online work set in all the subjects, um, you might be surprised to see that that child will find themselves in set two or set three because the assessment system has changed. Now that is very important. That's why on a daily basis, we need to constantly um, be on our young people to take their daily work seriously. And I, I know, obviously, th this is a shock to everybody's system. <laughs> a shock. But we need to learn to adapt to changes. That's so important. I mean, can you imagine if somebody say we're going to be online schooling, you know, two years ago, and somebody will say, no, 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 maybe you are in, a <laughs> you're in another world. But here we are. Here we are. So parents must know that assessment has changed. And assessment will be based on what the response of student um, um, on a daily basis, of course, with homework and um, you know, an online you know, assessment as well. That is important. In fact, the good side of that as well, you know, this gives parents an opportunity to get involved with their student learning. And our to our lovely parents out there. I know this is unprecedented times, but try and get involved. Let me give an example. Now, um, I got an email from my, some of the subject teachers in the school of my, my teenagers. Now, the email was an alert to say, you know, your child has not completed task A or task B. Now, because I am constantly checking on that, so I had to follow the young people up. Yet they have told me, oh, we've completed this, we do that. You see why I say you have to monitor your kids. But in a situation wherein maybe perhaps your school setting or their administrative arm is different, perhaps you're not getting an email. How are you going to know that the work they've submitted, okay, they have submitted in the correct portal or at the right time? Teacher and parent, you have to, you know, Pastor Floris used the word earlier, we have to be nosy. Now, where we are, you need to be more than nosy. You need to call the school and find out. Call the school and find out or send an email. I want to I want to strongly recommend that, you know, parents out there get the email address of all your the teachers that are teaching your, your children. You can, because we are online now, most it, it is highly likely that they will respond to you, well, maximum, you know, within a day. You will surely get a response. How, how is, for example, you know, Sophia doing? You know, um, Sophia said he submitted a work. That is perhaps maybe you are a parent. You are not into a technical um, aspect to know how to operate, or whether you're using Google Classroom or depending on the software system that they're using. Your, our young people can talk you out of it. They say, oh, mommy, no, no, you don't understand that. Oh, daddy, you don't understand that. Um, this is how to do it. The work is submitted, you see. And they can be showing something to you that is clearly flawed, 
But if you don't understand it, you say, okay, my child has done this. But no, call the school, send an email. Can you please update me or let me know if my daughter or my son have submitted the work? And please, I want to make sure that you let me know at any time. They've even delayed in one day because sometimes there can be late submission. So this is very important. Why? Because the assessment system have changed. So you don't want to have a shock report from your school and your child was in Z1, now he said two or three or four. Say, what happened? No, something has been happening along the line. And I, I, I hope you will receive this information and run with it. Pastor Daniel, thank you, Multimedia. Thank you. I, I, I really needed this assistance today. Thank you so, so much. You know what? Um, parents, well done because I know there are some, <laughs> there are some parents is like they are pro, they are very proactive. They are very proactive parents, and they are you know some parents that are less proactive, obviously because of various reasons. So we're just giving all the options that are available. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, if you are a parent that struggles with language barrier, find somebody that can make time for you. Fund the school school, from the school, and always get updates. Obviously, because of the COVID, you don't just walk into schools now, and some schools have various rules and regulations, right? But from the school, or you can use your child's email to email the teacher, because we've had, we've had that on occasions. We have a child can email to say, oh, my mom wants to speak to you, or my dad wants to speak to you. Oh, my days, please, from the school, Phone to speak with the teacher. Yeah, if you're not happy with anything as a parent, like, you know, uh, um, our teacher has said, let's be extra nosy. Because we don't know how long this, this thing is going to continue. And we just don't know even what's going to happen next. Are we going to have a situation like this? We are not hoping, but things do happen. We need to prepare ourselves now that we have had a taster. Now that we have had a taster, it is not a twist, it, 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 it is not a sweet tester, but please, parents, be encouraged. And I know it is not easy, right? You know, um, Pastor Daniel, some people, might, some parents might want to say, we do get this often that, um, you know, especially, you know, children, when they are playing, for example, on the games and everything, they never get tired. My son will sit there two, three hours playing, screaming, they will be shouting, but when it comes to learning, because they have to pay attention, they have to concentrate. You don't talk unless you are asked to talk. And, you know, obviously, um, I know schools, various schools right across England. And, you know, even if you're in Australia or America, different countries, I know that you all, there are things in place for your educational system, for your children. So we are just talking about little variances here and there, but I think we can all connect as parents, how can we help our children to have screen time? Because I know that, for example, in my school, we encourage our students to take their break time, which is 20 minutes, and also take their lunch time, which is about 50 minutes. But what tends to happen sometimes, even during their break and lunch times, they're still on screen playing. Then, you know, when it now comes to their learning, you call, you, you didn't see some of them turn up. What happened to you? I was having headache. So what did you do at your break time? Or, you know, did you not rest? And I know some parents have been genuinely concerned. Some parents have to take their children to the opticians because, you know, issues with their eyes. They've not been looking at the screen for a long time. Some are having headaches. And with these things, it, it takes a while for your body to get used to them. But how can we encourage parents as well? to encourage their children to make sure they are taking time off the screen. And as the teacher, how well have you managed that with your students? Because I'm sure you've had similar complaints. Um, what you spend time on for a while have the propensity to be addictive. Um, because obviously all of us are, are spending more time on the screen now. So, but 
with regards to breaks, regular breaks are extremely important for our mental well-being and also obviously for our, for, for the health. So what, what I will recommend to parents, uh, going back to the aspect again of, um, of monitoring, you need to know the timetable of, of the children, particularly the school current timetable, not the old school timetable, because most schools, because of the pandemic, they have updated their timetable, okay? Maybe you, you have a child who might be giving you a timetable that is the old timetable. I say, oh, mommy, this is my timetable. <laughs> that is my timetable. You need to check that because timings have changed, you see, and ensure that breaks are important. Now, the, the breaks are important because if, if you have to um, physically, first of all, most of most of them that know with young people, when you talk to them once, for whatever reason, I'm sure perhaps some of you can relate to what I'm saying. They can say yes once, they can say yes twice, but for whatever reason, the information you are communicating, it does not stay. So you have to say, okay, uh, okay, take a break now. Can you go out for a walk or do some skipping? Well, maybe I'll come to extracurricular later or do something within um, a, that time bracket, okay? And um, for parents, because we can, it's easy for us also to get caught up in what we are doing, perhaps in your office job or office task, you can set an alarm, set different alarms of breaks at different times, perhaps maybe one or two minutes to the break time of your child. So even though perhaps you might be either in a meeting or something, you know, we, the flexibility of, of home, home work, working from home is you can pop out for a few minutes, okay? So you can communicate to your colleagues, say, give me a moment, I need to check on my, 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 you know, my daughter or my son, and ensure they move out of that screen and out of that, you know, um, um, what's it called, gadget, because it's good for their mental well-being, because that is very important. And um, another thing I must highlight is talking about regular breaks, you know, those 20-minute break, like, for example, you know, Pastor Floyd mentions, you know, their school is doing 20-minute break and 50 minutes, maybe lunch. Um, try and encourage them to do something else, something extracurricular that have nothing to do with um, uh, what's it called? Their education, i.e., in terms of their academic work. You know, there are many things someone can do. I mentioned earlier on about skipping. Maybe get a skipping rope, go outside, yeah, maybe in the back garden, do some skipping, or do something, um, you know, um, you know, something outside. You know, also this is another opportunity for parents out there to to encourage their children to learn different skills. You know, uh, maybe you want to, if you want to learn how to play guitar, or maybe if there's only a guitar session, um, there are many things you can learn, or piano, or do something outside academics, because that is good, again, for the mental well-being of the student. You know, so um, I would say parents should set an alarm for the break for their kids and follow that up to make sure they take regular breaks, because it's good for their Mental well-being. Yes, Master Bros. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments. I just wanted us to pause and have some comments, lady. Thank you, Lady Taonga. Thank you, Dikin Jen. Um, Diki Jen said they should also take a break from their phones. Mm, you know, um, that's so true. We need to have this more often. Um, she says she's learning. Um, the King Jennifer says it's very practical. Mr. Carol says you're very right. You know, parents, again, you know, we, I am a parent, so I can relate with everything that's being said. I think, um, you know, even as an adult, I have to make sure that I motivate myself because I, you know, I never thought working from home. I know some people are, are used to working from home, but for some of us, this is the first time for me that I've worked from home and I found it so challenging. I had to motivate myself. And so I would just put the young person in my position. If I myself as an adult, you know, I had to push myself extra. And also, you know, talking about um, um, looking after our well-being, I have to make sure when I finish, because I found out that 
once I finish eating, you know, I'm going back and I'm relaxing on my bed and all of those. I'm like, what? I have my fitness watch. Why don't I go back to doing my walks? You know, I had to encourage my daughter. Well, she likes baking and all of those stuff. So she gets some of my son. He's a sporty person. So he was really finding it challenging, you know, not being able to go. But let's encourage them. Do some exercise. Like, you know, Pastor Daniel said, get a skippy rope. If they can bake, if they can mess about in your kitchen, learn new skills, you know, so that they are focused not only on, on the book, yeah? Obviously, we don't want them to stay behind of their learning, but at the same time, we don't want them to be pressured, okay? As long as they're keeping up, keeping up with assignments, we, was, we said this earlier, um, um, parents, as long as you are being updated, really, um, there is no need to stress because you're already dealing with, you know, some parents have four or five children and they have to ensure that those children's well-being are still, you know, um, keeping up, you know, so I know that everybody is going through challenging moments. We can only encourage you as a parent not to give up, you know, and I know it even makes it more challenging if you're a single parent. Where you have two parents, it is challenging, but if you're a single parent, it's, it's a double whammy. So I want to encourage all my my single parent dad, single parent mom, please um, also remember to seek support. Like I said, the schools have different systems that they have set up. For example, some schools are allowing um, priority. If you work in, um, if you're working as a key worker, your child is allowed to go to school. You know, you just need to fill in the form and say the reason why. And obviously, vulnerable children are going to school. But if you're really struggling, you know, another issue again, uh, which we're going to talk about in, in, in a little bit. Um, if you're really struggling, speak to the school, speak to the counselor. As a parent, don't be shy. Don't don't run away. Say, ah, if I now tell the school my problem, they're going to take my child away. No, 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 no. The school is there to support. You know, yes. Yes, sir, you can come in. Yeah, let me just come in in that area. Now, this is very important because... Um, I, I've been dealing with, um, you know, situations wherein the my students, um, as a teacher, there are some families where they can have two, three, you know, children in one home, but there's only one laptop, okay? Um, and they are having school sessions at the same time. So how, how, how do you balance that? So that's where the school support system now comes in play. The school, I don't know what area, but you know, here in Cardiff in Wales, um, we we have a system wherein what the school where I'm teaching currently, we support parents with what they call a Chromebook. And uh, it is distributed according to priority. There are some families that have absolutely no computer at home. They are top priorities. And then it's broken down to those families wherein they have three student or kids in the school but there's only one laptop so they are also in terms of priority number two and so on and so forth but parents have to let the school know that this is the situation so as pastor flores is saying is it is not it is not in any way um something you should be shy about or things oh i don't want them to know that i don't have a laptop or maybe i have a laptop broken down for example i was dealing with a situation wherein you know in this family they have a, a, a desktop, but the desktop was broken down. It wasn't working. So they informed us. Well, particularly if I'm as a form tutor, so I had to relate that to the department, to the authorities concerned. And now this is a priority because this family, they actually have, you know, this machine, but it's not working. It's broken down. So they, you know, so the school have a support system. Please take advantage of it. Take advantage. Don't don't um, suffer in silence, please. You know. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to add that. So much. <laughs> I'm putting my hand up like I'm a student in the class. <laughs> you know, we need to live by example, isn't it? We definitely have to 
for the right example. So I put my hand up. You know, um, Dickie Jennifer said, thank you, Pastor Daniel, for mentioning the importance of mental health. Um, Lady Janet Kamara says, something else that they like doing as long as it's not on the computer. Yes, just get them involved in different activities. Um, Pastor Daniel, thank you so much for touching on that. I want to encourage every parent. Please, let the school not be your enemy. You know, I, I used to find it challenging sometimes because my son used to go to the same school where I work and oh my days, the days that this boy gets in trouble, <laughs> I, 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 I go down a position. So, and then a mom, you know, I have to act like a mother. I have to deal with the situation like a mother, you know. So I was always switching in between and, you know, after that, I will come back into my position, you know, as a member of staff in the school but please do not suffer in silence i also wanted to mention that um this is the time this covid season has just proven to us that no man is an island if you're struggling communicate we are doing this for the benefit of our children those children regardless of what is going on nothing should stop our children from um progressing uh, um you know also please um, if you if, if you struggle with groceries and other things as families, the schools are giving vouchers. And even if as a parent you're not receiving vouchers, there are systems set in place, maybe in your local borough, in your in your local community, there is help available. Please just Google in your area and see what you can find out. Um Mr. Daniel, I can see that my time is ticking, but um I think. We'll see how it goes. I think we might have to come back um, next week because I don't like rushing um, into things. But, um, you know, we spoke about earlier some of your specialty because I think the main concern for a lot of parents that used to send their children to do tuition, you know, now that's not been possible. And I know that's another area where you are excellent um you're very excellent in um in tuition and you've tuition young people several young people and they've gone and they've achieved well in their gcses especially in this area of course subjects that we are talking about so um what will you will you want to shed a, a, a light on that are you available to teach let me say if i'm a parent living well at the moment, there are really no barriers as long as one is online. Are you available if some parents are interested and they would like you to tutor their children? I think next week when we come back, um, um, we're going to talk about, you know, you might have some suggestions as to revision materials or websites that the children can use to revise and all of those. But at the moment, um, will you be available if um, parents are interested? Yes, um, I am available um, with online you know, session. So if um, a parent wants, you know, extra, you know, um, obviously additional support and inspiration, what, what what I do, I teach maths and science. Maths is from key stage three to five. In other words, year seven, eight, nine, and 10 and 11, and even year 12 for A-level maths. For science, um, I do, only key stage three and four that is from year seven to year um year 11. of course engineering i studied electrical engineering as my background so i am familiar with all those um the the, <clears throat> the curriculum and the content so i i'm available in doing those online sessions if a parent you know want extra support and um and of course getting extra support is not only you know with the teaching that i teach you know, I'm also a, a, a coach as a personal mentor. So most of them, my students get much more than uh, the subject, perhaps, you know, we sign for. You know, I tend to encourage them. We map out strategies as how to overcome different situations, not only from the subject area, even their motivation level, because that is key. That is very key because it's challenging to learn when there's you can't see the bigger picture and those are the things i provide to help them to see that this this pandemic will pass one day but it's how you prepare for it prepare for the future and um, that is the, that will, what that is what you know will determine the height you're going to scale in future yes as a problem
um, Tengele for, you see, we have possible limit their internet access, encourage them to talk to each other. Ah, you know, that's another area we're going to deal with. Hopefully, when we come back next week, you're talking to two coaches here. You're talking to two people that also work in the, in the pastoral welfare area. Um, he is a pastor and I'm a pastor, but we I'm an assistant head of learning. He's a senior mass practitioner. So we, you know, we want the, we want the best for our children and we wish the best for, for your children. I think um, we have a minute or so, um, um, Pastor Daniel, if we, let's just pray. Um, let's just pray. God has one here on my heart. What I want for my kids is what I want for other people. Let's just pray for the Lord to strengthen parents and also help our children to remain focused even during this challenging time. If we can just use one minute to do that. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this privilege to speak to your precious people. Um, I pray for every parent. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, I pray for patience for parents as well. I pray, Lord, you will help every parent, you know, as they map out strategies and follow the advice that we are recommended. We are recommending that you help everyone. I pray for the young people. I pray also for hearts to hear their parents because every parent desire the best for their their children. I pray that you give them an ear to hear so that their future will be carved out in the right way and so that they will excel in the future. Bless every parent, everyone that is feeling weak, tired, and feeling I want to give up. And Lord, I pray your strength upon everyone in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will run unto you when they desire help because you are the very present help even in trouble. Thank you for every parent. I pray for courage and grace Lord, for everything you've exposed to them, their children, you've given them those children because you know the capacity you put into them to handle what is happening. May they see, Lord, what you have deposited in them and use it, Lord, to help their children become the best that they can be. Thank you, Father. Bless every viewer. Bless every parent. Strengthen every feeble knee. Strengthen everyone that is feeling tired right now. From this moment on, May the wisdom of God flow and help, oh God, everyone, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Viewers, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Right? So we are... I have to bring you back next week so that we can finish properly. Ah. When it comes to my young people, no, I don't joke when it comes to my young people. I'm going to bring you back next because there are still some more things that we need to talk about so that our parents can be empowered. And I want to say well done to you. I use you as a point of contact to say well done to every teacher right across the globe. Every teacher, you know, that have worked so hard just to make sure our children don't miss out on their learning. Let's not forget. Parents, please, if this is a time to so just send a nice note, a nice message to appreciate your children's teacher. Forget about, you know, the complaints that when a, a, a teacher complains about your child, not that they, they hate the child, you know. I know sometimes there are instances where you have misunderstandings, but the teacher wants the best. The teacher wants the best for your child. So well done and kudos if you're a teacher or you're a teaching assistant or you're working with um, um, SEN um, students, you're working in any role in a school if you're a support staff. Well, I say kudos to you. Well, thank you so much, viewers. Next week again, 7 p.m. Please do remember to join us. Bring him back, Pastor Daniel, so that we can finish well. Well, you might have many more sessions with me. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Daniel, for tonight. I pray that you increase in grace, in knowledge, and in understanding. Thank you so much. God bless you all for tonight. Thank and have a blessed week, parents. Have a blessed week, everyone. God bless you. Thank you so much to my multimedia.